Hello and welcome to North Country Ham. Today I'm going to be going over uh, showing you a do-it-yourself build that I wanted to do for my shack. Uh, build my own dummy load. Um, the I've watched a lot of different YouTube videos and different options of building your own. Um, this one I figured would be relatively easy to do and it's a variation on one that I saw on uh, Radio Preppers. The dummy load I'm looking to do is should be quite simple to do, so stick around, check it out with me. I appreciate it. appreciate you sticking around. Um, I'm going to show you the parts that I've got um, and let you know where I picked them up at, uh, approximate cost that I've got for them. Um, and we'll kind of transition through showing you some of the build um, where I pr pretty much prep the case and stuff for what I'm doing and then the assembly and soldering of it. And uh, the dummy load I'm looking to build it's a 250 watt 50 ohm dummy load um, and let's transition here I'll show you the overhead so I kind of just go through the parts and everything at the same time so let's uh, transition over here okay so as you can see you know I've got a little bit of thermal paste that I picked up um, just got a little piece of 12 gauge wire that I've stripped the ends on just to use inside the case get my SO239 uh, whoop. Uh, connection. Um, I picked all pretty much all of this I've gotten off Amazon. Um, I've got a Hammond aluminum die cast case. It's the 1590B. Uh, I got some heat sinks. You don't have to use heat sinks on it, but I might just to, to do that. And right here's my uh, 250 watt 50 ohm resistor. Um, the case, the Hammond case, got off Amazon, and I'll share the links below on this um, in the description. Uh, the the case I got for six ninety nine. The heat sinks, if you desire to do it, were ten ninety nine, and there's four of them in the package. I've only got two laid out. I'm gonna kind of figure out my layout how I want to do it. The two fifty N fifty. Um, resistor RF resistor this was nine dollars 34 cents this took the longest to get of all the parts uh, the thermal paste if you got some around you know you don't have to worry about it but you can usually pick up this small tube is you about eight bucks for that tube just got some screws and lock washers and nuts that I had laying around in one of my bins in my uh, tool shop so, but you could usually pick up some screws and stuff like that for a couple of dollars. If you're not going to use the heat sinks, rough rough cost you'd be looking at is right around about twenty dollars to build this. Um, if you end up using your heat sinks, it could cost you up to close to about thirty bucks to build this dummy load, and it'll be a two hundred fifty watt fifty ohm dummy load. So, you know, I'll be I start out kind of figuring out my layout. I, I you know, want to take the packaging off and see how much space I've got. My initial thought was to mount the 239 on the one end and, you know, obviously mount the resistor on the inside on one side or the other um, inside the case. Um, I don't know, depending on the depth here I've got and what I've got to work with, I may end up just mounting it at the top. But, you know, I get a, I'm going to figure that out and I'll show that in there. Uh, this 1590B, this one is about two and a quarter by four and a quarter inches. 
and it's an inch and a half total depth so that's what I'm working with there um you know we'll, we'll once I get the I'll, I'll record the layout and you know probably do a speed up view of, of drilling and and prepping everything and then kind of do a little bit of the assembly and then finish off doing the soldering and, and showing the testing of it um, as far as a bench test with a with a multimeter and you know show you the end result and if you you know be a good project for hams or any new hams to build a dummy load it's a good piece of equipment to have in your in your shack for for any testing so with that we'll transition over to the assembly and production of it and and we'll go from there all right guys well welcome out here to the shop i'm going to do a little bit of the prep work like i said uh, one of the first things i want to do is take my voltmeter and test my little RF resistor just to make sure we're not going to waste time and it looks like I've got bouncing between 50.1 to 50.3 ohms so resistor is good so now we can continue on with the build you know no sense wasting time if you got a bad resistor so let me get this situated here with the camera so we can see what we're gonna do bear with me here all right one of the first things I want to do is mark out the case now kind of looking through this what I plan to do is take my 239 connector and I'm going to mount it on the end um, and I'm going to do it internally inside the case from the inside so that way it just sticks out the connector would stick out but the depth of my case is the same height as the 239 so what I'm going to do to rectify that on the one end of the lid where this lip sticks up I'm going to trim a little bit of that out of there so it's going to set flush on top of the 239 and not create a problem. Because if you run it in there, you can, as you can see, it's a little... So if it take that little bit of that ridge out, not a problem. But, we'll take on take, mark this out. With where we want to put everything. So I'm going to find the center. take my 239 now that I've got my center spot that way let me double check make sure we're okay Spot right there. The center of my case. And looking at this, I'm going to mount that. What I'm going to do, drill out the holes for the screws. So 
So I'm going to drill all the pilot the holes for the screws here, and then I'll drill out a bigger hole for the 239, which I'll use my once I get a hole, I'll use this step up bit. I've uh, used this a few times, so it's a little on the dull side at this point, but we'll see how it goes. I know we're going to want to go to probably at least a 5 8 to 11 16 step up on there. Once I get all those, just to make sure that the screw head set flush, I've got a little countersink bit here to to countersink it a little bit. So big enough. Sweet. Look at that. Now I'm going to line this up. See what I did there, how I've countersunk those. So when I my screws will set flush with no ridges, I'm gonna do the same thing on this end where I just drilled all this for the 239. So I've got the 239, so it'll come right through just like that all my holes and I'll countersink these so that they uh, they'll set flush the same way
gonna have to get a little creative here. There we go, all, all bolted in, two heat sinks mounted right on the bottom, and I'll do the same thing on the lid, and we'll be ready to assemble. And there we go folks, two more heat sinks mounted on the lid, so this will get screwed together when it's all done and we'll have a dummy load that's heat sinked for temp to help keep the temp reduced. So there we go. I'll uh, trim this little lip out here so we'll be all set and we'll go from there. go sweet nice fit and there we go folks so with that we'll transition back to our overhead camera and do our assembly all right we're back in the uh filming area here to do some assembly and the soldering on the parts so let's uh, transition right into that guys and 
All right, there we go. So you can see here the lid that I mounted. You can see the screws in there a little bit, but they're mounted right to the to the lid. And I've kind of removed a little bit of this here, as you can see. Removed a little bit of that lip so it sets flush. We're on the SO239. And here's two more heat sinks mounted right to the plate here. And you can see where I've drilled for the resistor and I've drilled for the 239 and countersunk them. So that way the screws will set flush. So, and I've got a little bit of Loctite. All right. So what I'm going to do put this SO239 in here. I'm going to mount it this way. There we go. And we'll put our We'll get them part of the way screwed down, and then we'll uh, put a little dab of Loctite on each of them. There's lock washers on here as well, but there's that. So now all we're gonna do is solder the wire here. We'll solder it right into there. That way we got a good connection. And then we'll get it set to where it'll right on the RF oh put the screws through here
Okay. There we go. Bolted down and in for both. We'll get my soldering iron on. So this clip it on there just like that and screw it down. So that'll be the dummy load. Letting the soldering iron heat up. See, there we go. So that's wired up. Looks like we got good connection on both. Do a, do a test here and see. get a good contact here I'd know there we go keeps bouncing around a little bit because of my connection but it's at 50 Let's get through we go 50 ohms see that nice so we got a good test double check it just again just to make sure there we go so here's a good test for and there we are folks nice and uh, flush there flush there and right there's our uh, 250 watt 50 ohm dummy load so there finished product folks all right well i hope you enjoyed uh 
the the build with me here to see what I've got and of course and I'll share all the links below for where I bought the products and what other accessories I might have with it and you know so I appreciate everybody watching and uh, as always do it yourself if you can it's a fun projects to do and it helps you learn with the radio and as always get on the air <laughs>